Hey friends, today we are doing a little day in the life of me vlog. Recently I asked if anyone was interested in me doing a Q&A and a lot of people said yes and they gave me some great questions. So I wanted to do a Q&A, make a vlog about it and share my day with you guys and basically touch base on what it's like to be a YouTube creator, go to Disney all the time, live in Florida, and just share my day with you and my experiences. So we're gonna probably ride some rides, eat some food, Food and have a beautiful Florida kind of day. Anywho, let's go do this. I guess if we're doing a day in the life of me vlog, uh, might as well start the way I do every day. Me and Gracie go to a dog park and we hang out, we get coffee and pup cups and decide on what we're gonna do for the day. Unless I'm traveling and then I miss her, but it's like the most consistent thing that I always do. Me and Gracie, I love my mornings with Gracie. Yeah, it's a great start to the morning. There were so many questions, so thank you guys so much for just showing interest in my life. It's crazy to think that I'm interesting enough to have a Q&A, but I do feel like I can share some insights on what it's like to be a YouTuber or a content creator and maybe help people that are looking to do the same in sharing and giving them like insights, you know? I've got to do a lot of amazing things and I'm very blessed for every opportunity I've had and it kind of still takes a while for everything to catch up to me because like I've been traveling the world I've been to Japan London Paris Canada and all of this happened within the past two years and I've never I've never thought I would visit any of those places so it's gonna be like a fun day just answering questions hanging out and going about my day there she goes normally you guys see her coming down the steps but we're just coming home from the dog park now it's time to start the day because not only am I going to be sharing with you guys all of the happy moments in my life and all of the exciting things that have happened, I also am going to share with you guys the struggles, you know, depression and anxiety and things a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to content creation. And, I, you know, I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to have better help, which is the world's largest online uh, therapy, reach out and ask if I was ever interested in doing a sponsorship and since June was uh, men's mental health uh, month uh, I figured this would be a good video to uh, put that out there mostly because you know I struggled with depression and anxiety uh, and a lot of different disorders my whole life and honestly I didn't know who to talk to but if you know we had the the technology and the uh, services available to us back then I probably probably would have handled it a little bit better. And that's why something like, you know, online therapy, that's just easy access is so incredible. And I just want to spread that message. So I'll put a link in the description if anybody's looking to, you know, seek help or just have someone to talk to. Because like I said, back in the day, when I was growing up, if this was available, uh, I would have probably used it. You know, I would have definitely reached out and asked for help. Uh, so the link is in the description and thank you so much for better help for sponsoring the video. And uh, I think we're just gonna dive in. First question. Since I have to pick an outfit for the day, a lot of people have asked, how many Roosevelt shirts do I have? And the answer is, a lot. I have an incredible amount of very cool, comfortable Roosevelt shirts that I like to wear. And honestly, it's so fun. No one has ever told me before that, hey, you dress nice or hey, that's a nice shirt until I started wearing these shirts. So I kind of just made it my personality and I worked with the team. And honestly, it's been a friendship that I'm going to cherish forever. That was just one question that a lot of people asked and I figured instead of picking a comment I would just answer it as I'm going about the day. Like I said, I had to get ready for the day and put on a shirt and I have a lot more shirts than that and we'll touch base about Roosevelt's and all the great things that we uh, have accomplished together uh, later on in the video because I know I have a question uh, from somebody about that and I wish I could show you all of the shirts because I have a lot. I mean. <laughs> I don't even have room in my closet. I've taken my uh, kitchen pantry over with uh, 
unopened Roosevelt shirts. Uh, and I love them. Like I said, they're, they're so stylish. Look at this fancy one. But the first comment uh, the, that really I thought was a perfect way to start out this video is uh, from Fun at Disney. And I'll put it kind of down here. What work did you do before YouTube? And when was the point that you could quit your job and do your channel full time and be a full time content creator? Which is a great question because I would love to tell you guys a lot of that. And in fact, fact, I know some of you know I was a restaurant manager. I've done some videos in the past talking about working at Denny's, but I kind of want to dive a little deeper. You know, I want to kind of uh, share with you guys kind of, you know, my story and my success and where I came from with things because, you know, I'm not that smart of a person. Uh, I, I hate to say it like that, but I'm really not. I have an eighth grade education level. Um, I really had a hard time focusing in school. I have ADHD very badly. I uh, take medicine every day and it's hard for me to focus on things. And it was a challenge in school and um, I decided to leave and start working full time when I was 16 years old. So I started working at fast food restaurants and uh, gas stations and then eventually I became a line cook and I became so good at cooking that I got promoted to a manager. And when I became a manager, um, I didn't have any office skills. I didn't know how to you know, work Excel. I had to have like dishwashers and hostess and people help me just make a schedule and I had a great team that helped me become the person that I am today and I kind of took passion with it because it was the only thing I was good at I was good at you know cooking and then I felt like people were relying on me to you know be a good manager and I you know I tried my best and I eventually I became a general manager and that came from you know not even knowing how to read. Like I really had a hard time and I still don't know how to read that great. But I was uh, being a restaurant manager for you know, several years. I mean, once I found a position that I can just do good, I just stayed in it. And uh, I did that all the way up until I moved to Florida and started making these videos. And uh, the point of where I was able to stop doing that was during the pandemic. You know, unfortunately the restaurants closed and I, uh, I lost my job and prior to that I was just doing videos vlog style and I was just basically going out on my two days off a week capturing what we did in the parks and just hang out goof off and that's it like you know what I mean just not putting an effort into it just kind of just throwing together videos and uh, I was having a great time and when I lost my job and the pandemic happened I didn't have any money saved up I didn't have anything so um, I started making more videos and I decided to maybe care and put effort and you know really try to like you know go go strong and you know like put my best into it and uh, it turned out to be what it is today. I remember, you know, prior to that, I would never take thumbnails. I would just literally just screenshot whatever I got or, you know, I just take a picture from like Google or something. And now, you know, I've kind of changed my vlog style since then. And I want to be more of like a topic piece. And I like to start the day and say, hey friends, we're gonna do this, 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 and kind of set that expectation so you can go out and capture the day and make the video. And it's the greatest feeling ever. And because like I said, I, I, you know, I have ADHD really bad and I have a hard time learning and stuff like that. I basically just do everything off trial and error. I just, just keep doing and then eventually when you do something, you're like, oh, nope, that doesn't work. Nope, don't do that again. Or then you're like, oh wait, this is working and you start catching on. And uh, you know, that's how it basically evolved into the amazing life that I live now because I love my life. And I'm so grateful that I got to this point, but it really puts into perspective that you can get to, you know, amazing places and you can do, you know, things that you never thought you could do before. Because like I said, I would have never thought any of this was on my cards and it's all because of you guys because like I said I never wanted I was just a restaurant manager and I was going to the parks and I was filming it and then people started watching I was like wow this is great and it evolved into this amazing thing where I get to capture content and share my experiences all around the world going to Disney and bring entertainment to you guys so that was an excellent question and uh, I gave you like a four minute answer so I hope I hope that I covered a lot I'll try to trim down the questions a little bit more going on from here, but I felt like that was a good a good start. 
We're taking this Q&A on the road, but I gotta give Gracie her cookie. There you go. She's so precious, isn't she? <laughs> I would probably have to say one of my biggest regrets in life was leaving school and starting to work when I was 16 years old. I wish I went to college and I also like watch movies and TV shows where I see people that like went to prom and they graduated and stuff like that. I'm never going to be able to experience that. And it makes, you know, makes me a little sad, but I do uh, have, uh, you know, some good news. I did uh, go and obtain my GED on my own and uh, I felt a great accomplishment by that. And uh, like when I say stuff like this and when I'm telling my story, I'm not trying to make it seem like, you know, I'm like, oh, I came from this and this and that and that. I just want people to know that during extreme circumstances and challenging times that you can, you know, make something out of nothing because I really feel like I made something out of myself especially when I felt like I was nothing. So just, you know, I wanted to put that out there and we're going to continue on with the questions. I had to stop and get some gas. Oh, and one of the good questions, actually one question right here, I seen this one. It's, I am a new resident and a new pass holder. How do you keep the magic alive? I feel like I'll never have the excitement of a Disney vacation because now I live here. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy myself, but it doesn't feel quite the same. And I get that. I get that 100%. I love going to Disney. In fact, I live five minutes from Disney. I'm at the gas station right now across from the Magic Kingdom. You could probably see Cinderella Castle as you pump the gas. And uh, the best thing about living local is that you don't have to spend all day in the park. You can just go in for like, you know, two minutes, not two minutes, like two hours, walk around World Showcase. You don't have to overdo it. But when you come on vacation, you have that sigh of relief that like your only purpose is to just have fun. You don't drive, you take the buses. And uh, when you live here, you have to face real problems like cutting the grass, going to doctor's appointments. So you, you can kind of go to Disney like whenever you want. You know what I mean? You don't have to wake up early and rope drop and you don't need to immediately ride a ride one day unless you're really feeling it because, you know, when you're on vacation, you're like, I got to ride Expedition Everest. I don't know the next time I'm going to come back to Disney World. But down here, you're like, oh, if I didn't get on it, I can just come back tomorrow. So to answer your, your question is you just take it easy. You really take the time to enjoy the park and being able to just walk around without having that sense of urgency like I need to use as much time wisely to make sure my money's worth it you know that's a good answer right here is the gas station and like I said you can literally see Cinderella Castle right there I can hear the train whistle so it's really great to live close to Disney and plus it's very easy to get to when you live around the corner I stopped off at my French cafe to get a little cherry Danish and answer some more questions. And this is a good question right here. Do you ever feel awkward or strange doing videos with a bunch of people around? I've always wondered how you could hang out and talk in the camera like you do with people walking by and people looking at you. Uh, I would feel like they're talking about me as they walk away, LOL. And yeah, I mean, I get, I get nervous, I get anxious. And in fact, when I first started making videos, I was so shy to even like, pull my camera up I used to record down here so I used to walk around and just like record the bottom of my chin now I do this but you know it's just something that you learn to do and you find different ways of kind of avoiding that for me personally I uh, do 50% uh, of my shots facing outwards and 50 from my 50% uh, of my shots facing me uh, so that means almost half of the video it's usually the cameras pointing at me and I always find nice little areas where I try to where it's quiet and there's nobody in the background and that's like the best way to do it I get very nervous raising my camera up in a crowded room or in a restaurant and if I'm seating at a table uh, right next to like another table uh, I feel like I don't want to disturb them and most case scenarios I just don't vlog those days you know what I mean like you can ask for different tables but like if you're in an un comfortable situation and even if you think your your video is just drawing attention you know too much if you don't feel comfortable just you know take yourself away go to a quiet spot find somewhere nice you can still make content and be nervous about filming around others i don't know i just wanted to say that's it that's it that's something for a lot of creators out there you know who do have anxiety issues you can control where you film your videos you can find corners you just got to take it at a slow pace and don't feel too rushed 
Things I learned. Only because I used to feel rushed and I ran around. <laughs> I love my French cafe here in Windermere. There's some of the best little croissants and danishes. And it's always good. I like to get a little cold brew coffee too. Coffee, dog park, start of the day. While I'm eating my little cherry danish, uh, might as well answer another question. And here's a pretty good one. Have you ever done a food review and the meal was so bad that you either had to cut it from the video or said something diplomatic about it? What is the worst meal you had? That's a good question. And normally, like, it takes a lot for me not to like food. Like, I love eating food and I tend to stick to things that I like to eat. Like, I don't like ordering things I don't like to eat. So, like, of course, if I, you know, order something that I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. And then I review it and I'm like, I didn't like it. Well, it's not fair because I didn't like it. You know what I mean? But uh, there's some times where I rather just not make a video on food. I like making videos that are centered around good food and just like positive videos. And if I know that I'm not going to like something, I probably won't go into it not making a it like making a video i don't think i've ever made videos like the worst food and things i don't like to eat i could probably put a list together but it's just not like content that i wanted to make i want to make like positive content you know and uh probably my worst meal was be our guest like i uh, i still don't even know if i've ever put out a video from be our guest like i have to look back and think about it because it's so like it's so like tight quarters in there. It's very loud. It's dark. I don't like escargot snails. Oh, I did make a video because I remember I went back to try it. I would say that that's probably the my least favorite Disney restaurant. Be our guest. Like I just, I have no desire to go there. <laughs> I don't know if that's like, I don't know if that's like, you know, a hot, a hot take or not, but just my opinion. And uh, I hope that answered the question. Jerry Danish. I'm gonna take the rest of this Danish home with me because I'm posting a video today and I wanted to uh, bring you guys and show you what uh, it's like for me when I post a video or when I publish a video. Today I'm posting a video I shot yesterday and I always try to post around noon only because you build a great community around it. And there are people that I have been talking to in the comments for like five years. Usually whenever I post a video, I like to comment back in the section, like in the comment section for like the first 30 minutes. And there have been like friendships made. Uh, Dino and his family, Miss D, Johnny, uh, so many amazing people. And uh, they have like their early crew. And every Every time I post a video, they comment within the first half an hour and we have like little chit chats and I love that. I'll never, I'll, I'll, I'll probably never stop doing that. But uh, we're getting close to that time. So one more question. Nate, love the video. The one question I have is how to get started in vlogging. What editing software do you use and equipment? Looking forward to the next vid. That's a great question. I feel like all these questions are great. Me, personally, I am not very uh, knowledgeable in technology. Is that a word to say? I don't know. Um, uh, for the longest time, i am only ever shot on a Canon G7X Mark II, and then I upgraded to the DGI, uh, which is that little tiny small camera. I'm shooting on it right now, um, but I've never been a big camera person. I like small, compact cameras. They're the best thing uh, when you're going around, especially in cities or theme parks, um, and I don't use any mics. I just have a naturally loud, projected voice, so a lot of people talk very soft into their cameras where I project my voice comes out so I don't have to use a mic most of the time you can hear me even over the loud noise in the back um, but for editing <laughs> that's it's gonna be a funny one <laughs> because uh, I uh, just recently started using a Mac uh, uh, last year actually and prior to that I edited it on Windows Movie Maker uh, for basically six years up till 2022 I was using Windows Movie Maker on my little HP laptop to edit all my videos and uh, I think in 2022 I gave in I bought myself an Apple uh, MacBook and I started using iMovie and that's what I use now I keep it very simple. Like I said, I I don't I, like you know I don't have like skills when it comes to editing and videography, but I just like telling s stories and talking to cameras and showing good times and checking out places. So you know, good answer is it, it's whatever you want. <laughs>
you know, you want to be technical, buy some fancy equipment. If you want to make it simple, keep it simple, then just stick to the basics. Get yourself, you know, a small camera, you know, a nice, decent laptop, and that's about it. This is the camera that I'm using now. This is the DJI Pocket 3, and it is honestly a game changer. You can shoot in short form, like long format or widescreen, and you just flip it open and then hit record. And you can even flip it back to you too. Look, now it's recording us. Very easy, I highly suggest getting it. Now we gotta check on the video and uh, answer back some comments. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what camera or laptop you have. You can have the best ones in the world, but the most important thing is creativity. Being able to create a video that people are going to want to engage with and watch and take something from. And uh, like I said, I mean, I, I've shot on cell phones. I've, I, I've shaken my camera all over the place. And there are people out there that are still watching me to this day. And I love them. Thank you so much. If you've been watching since I've been... You <laughs> running around a theme park and I couldn't hold the camera steady and you're here now. I appreciate you. And you know, speaking of community, I have another good question here. Somebody uh, mouse tracks, they said, How do I enter the community? I have my own agenda and resources for growth. I don't even want to collab. I want to earn this myself. It would just be cool to have some Disney friends who share the same passion for creating and sharing. Yeah, that's awesome. This community is great. You'll be able to meet a lot of friends. I'm a very bubbly part like person so i'll approach anyone and just be like hey you want to hang out my friends Kristen and sean i think i messaged them and i seen one of their videos and i was like you guys look like fun do you want to hang out and they were like yeah so we hung out and uh when you're out and about in the parks you'll run into tons of people and even travel people look up other people's videos when they're making videos and they become fans themselves there are channels that i watch all the time and i run into them in the parks and i get excited to see them and uh they're kind of my friends <laughs> you know what i mean it's crazy even though we don't hang out all the time and anything like that but when you get to these you know events or opening days you tend to run into a lot of people and you get to say hi to everyone and that's the best way opening day events you really get to meet a lot of people and talk to a lot of different creators and that was a good question but that's my answer just go out there talk to someone if you want to hang out and i see you in the parks yeah i'll hang out like you know unless i'm doing something busy but i hang out with a lot of people uh and uh, don't be afraid to you know message someone and be like hey i see you go to the parks all the time you, you ever want to go and make some videos together i've done that for a while and i loved it I've, I've got to hang out with so many people and there are so many different friend groups you can have people that are just like you know like riding the grind and they're just like yeah we're gonna do this 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 and we're gonna post our video tomorrow or you have friends that are just like oh let's have a chill evening and you can have different friend groups and different vibes and it's really great because there's just a world of awesome creators disney fans and people just living their life out there trying to do the same thing that you are so go make some friends with them my next errand of the day is stopping here at good old Publix. I gotta get something for a barbecue we're going to later. Maybe some baked beans. Baked beans for the barbecue. Before we head into Publix, I want to do one more question parking lot style, and this is a good question. Do you ever feel pressured to make content on days you don't feel like making content? And if you do have those days, how do you deal with that? Like, what gets you out of the funk? And uh, the answer is yes. I have days sometimes where I feel extreme pressure that I'm not out there making content because I've always been that person that I was like, man, if I had the opportunity, I could do it, and I did it for a while. Like, I was out there grinding putting out videos and uh, eventually uh, my body caught up to my mind and was like whoa slow down you know I have a very hyperactive brain and uh, I can go 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 and the next thing you know I'm like limping out of the park or uh, I'm not sleeping for two days straight and it it's an extreme amount of pressure that you eventually learn to manage now I know I need to take days in between I need to rest you know, I travel a lot. I travel almost every month. I go to, you know, I've been to, you know, uh, Japan, London, Paris, uh, California, all in just this year. And I thought that I could just bounce back into videos once I, you know, got back from traveling. But like, it takes a toll on you and you, you kind of, you, you hold yourself accountable. Like you're calling off sick for work and you're like, no, come on, get up. We gotta go. And uh, it's an internal struggle, but you deal with it and you learn that, you know, everybody's human.
you know, that's the thing. Everyone gets tired. And uh, uh, my biggest uh, suggestion is, you know, if you're really not in the mood to make a video, don't go out and make a video. Just stay in and rest up and save it for the other day. Save it for the next day. I'm going to a barbecue later and I needed to bring something. So I love Publix Bakery. I think I'm about bringing a classic apple pie. It's a dish you can always bring to a barbecue. And uh, it's the uh, pie winner, 2024 winner by the American Pie Council, the APC. And it's only $4.99. Not a bad deal. Oh, I'm excited to answer this question. And it is, uh, what is your favorite video you have ever made? And I can't narrow it down to one video. There's like so many videos that are my favorites. I loved my trip to Tokyo and Japan. I loved going to Paris. I loved my videos with my family, spending time up in Pennsylvania and you know, going to the parks and exploring it with my mom and sister. And other than that, like, oh, Probably uh, the video I made when I rode Guardians of the Galaxy with uh, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman from uh, Breaking Bad. Like, I rode Guardians of the Galaxy with the actors Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul, and we hung out and drank tequila. Like, I made a vlog about that, and that's, like, crazy to me. Such a cool story, and if you haven't seen that video, you gotta check it out. But, like, that's something I'm gonna remember forever, because I was such a big fan of Breaking Bad and Malcolm in the Middle, and I got to, like, hang out with... Brian Cranston <laughs> another question is how do you make money I make money through ads on my YouTube videos so basically I make a YouTube video it plays on YouTube uh, nobody pays for it but they watch ads and I get uh, paid from Google itself I'm a Google partner and I get ad revenue from that and then there's other ways to make money I mean of course you have sponsorships and video like paid promotions I don't like to do a lot of those this one like I said I, I worked with better help because I just feel like it's a good fit for the topic of the video. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's, 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 it's definitely a lot more like complex than I thought it would ever be. You know what I mean? A lot of people think like you get paid by subscribers or you get paid, you get paid by likes and comments. The basic end of the day is how many people watch your video. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have. It doesn't matter how many likes you get. It's literally how many people watch your video. And uh, having a great community and having people just return, watch, and having like a following, it, it could be a long lasting career. I got an apple pie for the barbecue. And before we head in, I think we should answer another question. This one's a good question. S serious question. Do you enjoy being alone 90% of the time you do stuff? Or would you rather have a friend? I take a three-day vacation without my wife once a year. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, when I'm making videos, I love being alone. My favorite thing is going out and just recording and literally just focusing on me and uh, you guys, the camera. And I love taking my time going through the parks. Uh, sometimes I'm not always by myself. Sometimes I have people with me. Uh, I, you know, sometimes friends come and hang out and just because you don't see them in the video doesn't mean that there's somebody not there it's it's definitely a challenge when you are recording something that you really are hyper like hyper focused in because you know when you have somebody with you you really don't get to give them like quality time you're devoting most of your attention to the camera and that's how i am like when i'm making a video i'm like talking to my camera most of the day like like you know what i mean and i've been making videos alone for such a long time that that's just routine for me and uh you know it's not a bad thing i i kind of enjoy it i enjoy it a lot now sometimes i do like having friends in the videos and groups of people but my favorite is just me and the camera hanging out making some videos <laughs> We've got chicken, we got steak, we got corn. Marinade. And marinade. A little bit of everything on a barbecue. Well, the barbecue was amazing. I was just hanging out with my friends, cooking up on the grill. We had grilled chicken, corn on the cob. I didn't film much. I just wanted to show you a little bit into the grill because uh, we were just hanging out. But now I'm back home and I got a couple more questions. I want to answer them real quick. And maybe I'll do another Q&A in the future if you guys like this. I know I haven't gotten to answer a lot of questions. That's because I've just been answering very long answers. And it's probably not the best way to do it. But this is the first time I've ever done one. So if you do like this 
type of video. I'll do one again in the future, and I'm just trying to get the hang of the flow. But I do have a couple more questions real quick that I just want to finish up before we end the video. This one right here is a good question. Do you ever wish to go to Disney without being recognized? Have you ever had a rude fan come up to you? And honestly, this is... This is a, a very good question. I love getting recognized in the parks. Uh, for me, at the end of the day, I think the thing I love the most about what I do is the fact that I get the opportunity to make people happy and entertain people and do something good. And um, if you know, I can do that by just running into somebody in the park and saying hi and chit-chatting for a bit, it's the same thing as making a video. So I've started you know, basically taking my time and making sure that when I do run into people, I can, you know, talk to them and just chit chat for a little bit because I really think that's important in life. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you do run into, you know, some rude people or I don't want to say rude. They're just not the most pleasant people. I've had multiple times where people have tried to, you know, start things with me and people that have you know, come up to me in the parks in a very aggressive manners and it's not nice, you know, and I really, you know, I, I never, I never bite into it. I never, I never get into any drama beefs. I never, you know, want to start any drama. I never talk about anybody. I, I, you know, I, if I impacted somebody enough that they don't like me, I just want to apologize because that's like, you know, I, I don't, nobody nobody wants to be not liked and if i could have a chance to change the opinion of someone that doesn't like me i would more than happily try to do it and i'm not saying there's a lot of them out there but it's the internet it's full of people and it's one of the things you gotta you know you gotta weigh out the goods and the bads and uh that unfortunately is the bad but the goods outweigh it so you get used to it and uh it's something that you just uh kind of uh, know they exist but all the amazing people that come into the parks i still greet them the same way you know i'm excited to see them and uh i just thankful that they chose me to get entertainment out of or talk to or watch like you know what i mean there's tons of creators out there in the world and they decided to watch my video and i appreciate that so uh if you're in the parks you want to say hi i'm here I would more than likely chit chat and hang out and talk for as much time as I could. Unless I'm in a big hurry and I have to get somewhere, then I usually try to talk about it real quick and you know what I mean? But only because I need to go somewhere. Most of the time, I'm the person that needs to stop talking because I'll go on too much like I am doing right now. But <laughs> anyways, <laughs> another uh, good question that I had and a lot of people you know, have been asking if I plan on moving because I mentioned I'm moving. I'm looking at buying a house. I'm trying to purchase a house right now and um, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. And I can't even believe that that is something that I'm saying. Never thought I'd say I'm going to own my own house, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I'm doing it. It's, it's, it's been something that I've always dreamed of, and uh, the fact that I'm able to accomplish something and make my dreams come true is, you know, breathtaking. Like, honestly, I, I lose my breath sometimes. I'm like, whew, like I, I got to like talk myself into it, like it's happening, and um, I have to thank you guys. I have to thank you guys so much because I feel like um, I would never be here without you because, you know, as much as you don't think I'm just talking to one single person, you know, as a whole, there are so many people out there and a combined number of people that watch my videos together, but you can walk away. If you've watched my videos in the past and uh, you've been watching for years, I want to let you know you helped me make my dreams come true and you made something possible that you know i never thought would be possible and uh i owe you everything so anywho's i hope you enjoyed this video i thought it was really fun and an interesting take on you know uh vlogging youtube disney and uh like i said this is the first video so i'm just giving you a little test run but uh if you like more we'll do more so anywho's i hope you enjoyed the video i enjoyed making it and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!